A very warm welcome to the Art Vlog Art Lovers. I'm intrigued by the John Singer Sargent show here at Tate Britain and can't wait to have a look inside. Um, John Singer Sargent was um, born in 1865 um, in uh, Florence and although he was born to American parents he spent most of his life in Europe um, basing himself first in Paris and then in London where he became known as one of the greatest portraitists of his day. He's kind of like seen as a doyen, if you like, of, um, of, of Edwardian portraiture. And his portraits are often lush. Um, he's very, very good at drawing with the brush. Um, and some people have, this has led some people to call him superficial, but other people love his glamorous pictures. It's fair to say um, he produced 900 oil paintings and over 2,000 watercolours in his life and he kind of tired of being known as his portraitist and so in his later years he focused mainly on landscapes and there's definitely an impressionistic influence to some of these landscapes. But what I'm really interested in with this show which promises to bring together 60 works by Sar John Singer Sargent including many here that have not been seen in Britain before um, is the relationship with fashion because this show is called Sargent and Fashion and fashion has become has begun to become a huge draw on the on the um, London museum scene um, private galleries like 180 studios and public ones like the Victoria and Albert uh, Museum have seen massive success from their fashion exhibitions and so I think that Tate Britain are hoping to um, latch on to this success um, I'm kind of on the fence with John Singer Sargent. I've seen some of his work over the years um, and I've read a few reviews of this show because I'm a couple of weeks after it started and they've ranged from one star calling the show horrid, Jonathan Jones in The Guardian, up to about four stars. And I'm particularly interested to see how the curation links fashion and um, fashion and and the art of John Singer Sargent. The show's on all the way until the 7th of July, another one of these really long Tate runs. Um, it's £22, just had to check there to get in. And so, um, yeah, come and join me as we explore this. This is my first trip back to Tate Britain since the Women in Revolt show, which is still on. So if you want a double header of fantastic art, then go to that and maybe this. Anyway, I'm not going to narrate this show. I think I can show you the beautiful works and I'll try and capture how they relate to the fashion on display as well. And then I'll share my thoughts at the end of the show as to whether this is an exhibition that you, I think you should come to or not.
I really hope you enjoyed that exploration there of Sergeant and Fashion from Tate Britain. Um, I went in with an open mind, but not expecting to be wowed by it. And I came out having thoroughly enjoyed it. I enjoyed this exhibition much more than I expected. Um, I think it's fair to say that John Singer Sargent himself goes in and out of fashion. And he's probably um, been out of fashion um, recently in the last few decades. But for me, I think he's actually an incredibly modern artist uh, for reasons I'll explain in a bit. But first of all, I just wanted to um, mention the fashion element. Um, in no way is this a fashion show. It's still an art show, but it starts from the premise that John Singer Sargent um, he was a stylist as part of his painting of portraits. And I thought that the combining of certain fashion elements at certain points with the portraits, which dominate, absolutely worked well. And it was particularly thrilling when you were able to see original pieces in a few, on a few occasions, like you can see here, which were reflected in the portrait. There was no way in which I felt the, 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 the fact the dresses and the other fashion items got in the way of enjoying art. And in my opinion, it enhanced it. So well done to the curators there. Um, in terms of um, why John Singer Sargent is such a modern artist, um, and I was really surprised by this. I think it was a thrill reasons. First of all, um, there's a wonderful quote from a French critic where, who said, there is now a class who dress after pictures and when they buy a gown, they ask, will it paint? And I thought that was kind of when we think about how, how people today think about their public lives on Instagram and how they dress and their homes and how they're shown. Um, I thought we were seeing the beginnings of that in John Singer Sargent. Obviously, throughout history, when someone paints a portrait, they dress in a certain way. Way. But the exhibition argues this was enhanced in a way which, for me, made John Singer Sargent very, very modern. Secondly, probably my favourite room was called Wonderful Possibilities. It explained that while often Sargent produced commission pieces where he did um, put forward a typical gender norm, um, he was drawn to people who subverted uh, gender norms in the Victorian and Edwardian period, people like Vernon Lee, who you can see here. And I thoroughly enjoyed this room. It was incredibly modern um, and, um, and and sort of spoke to, to where we are today in our understanding of gender and how, how and gender fluidity. So really like that. And finally, and this is a much more simple one, some of the faces were really modern as well. And I really enjoyed that. Um, Rodin called um, Sargent uh, the Van Dyke of our time. And um, although I think that's going a bit far, I can see where he's coming from in some ways, but for me, Van Dyke was very much a court painter and John Singer Sargent seems reluctant to take on this role. And indeed, he was an international painter who cast his net much more widely. And yes, many of his um, many of his subjects were wealthy and they were commissions, but they included financiers and businessmen and people who had made their name in trade. The exhibition has said that he was one of his heroes was Velasquez and the other was Franz Howes. And I can see Franz Howes' influence in the way he painted the attitude of the city as you can see here and in the fact that he adored like housing working in different shades of black apparently he once visited Monet and there was no black paint and so Sargent said he couldn't possibly work in terms of the range of works on show, I thought it was really rich. Um, two of the greatest Sargent collections in the world are at Tate and at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. So it's apt that these two um, galleries came together to put this show on. And it's already been in the States under the title Refashioning um, Sargent in Boston. If you went to that, please post in the comments and let me know how you think it tra has transitioned across the Atlantic. Um, but there was a, so there was lots and lots of works from Boston from the Museum of Fine Arts, lots of works from Tate. But there was also a huge range of works from private collections that have not been shown in the UK before, other American galleries, the Musée d'Orsay. So for me, the range was really satisfying. This was a portrait show, so we don't get to see watercolours or, um, or, or, or John Singer Sargent's landscapes, but that's fine because it wasn't within the remit. I really like the section, the small little section on portrait of Maganette, Madame X, uh, Virginie uh, Gautreau, I think you pronounce her name, apologies for butchering that. Um, this, this, this was the portrait which you can see here, which was uh, submitted to the 1884 Paris Salon and caused a scandal um, uh, because one of the straps on, on Madame X's fair dress was dropping down and it sort of kind of hurt uh, John Singer Sargent's reputation in Paris. He was criticised for being deliberately flashy and... Um, 
for, for, for kind of like doing this for effect. But I really enjoyed the little bit of art history around that. And I really enjoyed the penultimate room, um, uh, which looked at a very different, non-formal uh, John Singer Sargent. So I really enjoyed it. I would say John Singer Sargent is not a gnarly, knotty, difficult painter. There's a sheen to his work. He doesn't probe the psychological depths in his portraits like Rembrandt does. And if you want to compare to the other great single portrait show going on in London at the moment with Frank Auerbach, it's worlds apart and it's very interesting contrasting those. So if you like your art, difficult, knotty, gnarly, um, this show might not be for you. But if you love beautiful works, room after room of wonderful faces, is beautifully executed his skill with the brushes is, is outstanding then i do recommend this and i would drum roll give it an eight out of ten i thoroughly um enjoyed it overall it's got this long run all the way till july the 7th and i think bearing in mind everything i've said um 22 pounds is incredibly good value um for for what is if you're into sergeant a world-class representation of his work and um so yeah if you if you liked what you saw you have to come along thank you very much for watching don't forget to subscribe to the art vlog and hit that notification bell and do remember that women in revolt is on until i think it's april i'm going to put the video link up here in case you want to do a two um two show in one day session if you've got artistic stamina and then women in revolt is transferring to edinburgh but most importantly of all, wherever you live in the world, don't forget to get out there and support um, your local art scene. See you next time.